And under, under the, on your slide 17, uh, parking citations issued, where does the money go from these citations? Does it, is there any uh, specific area that it's earmarked to, or does it go to our general funds? A percentage of it goes to a processing fee, and I believe it's 10%. 10% goes for the processing fee, so the remainder 90% comes back to the college. And where does the 90% go? It's in the unrestricted general fund. I'm sorry, in the restricted, restricted general fund under other local revenue. So it's unrestricted, okay. All right, great, thank you. Other questions, member of the board? Chair recognizes Vice President Otto. Thanks, uh, Lieutenant Pryor, for a, for a great presentation. Um, do you have a sense of whether, I, 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 let me start again. I know that the world, the criminal justice world has changed in the last several years. Uh, there was the, uh, the, the, a number of people were released from state prisons or at least sent back to county jails. And, um, and then uh, what, what uh, Sheriff McDonald tells us is that the Sheriff's Department was pretty well able to handle that. But then when Proposition 47 came in, there seemed to be a lot more crimes that were being committed and they were having trouble uh, addressing that because they were uh, the people that used to be committed crimes that were more serious had now been made misdemeanors. Are we seeing any of the uh, of that effect here on campuses? Do you have any sense of what trend lines are on those kinds of offenses? I would have to say that um, property crimes and, and it's the bike thefts. Right. I think what pushes that is they can get the bike quickly, sell it quickly, and more, more, more often they are using it to, with, for a drug problem. Mm -hmm. So they just come on campus, snip, snip, they're gone and they're able to sell that bike. And it's not just the college, it's throughout the city where we, we've had a spike in bike thefts on and off. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, drug crimes increasing at all? Uh, uh, I, I know you don't usually see those things on campuses, but uh, you know that we've got a, we've got a little bit of that. Uh, any trend lines on this, or not, not really? Because I, if I can refresh my memory, I, it's we actually went down as far as on our drug um, usage. Mm -hmm. So and mm -hmm. and we you know we're out there as far as the medical you know pot that you know students sometimes we we catch them they have a card and we just basically let them know that they, they shouldn't be doing it. It's not allowed because we have a, a no drug policy here on campus and then oftentimes we'll, we will we'll refer them to the director of student discipline. Mm, okay, okay. Um, any, if, if you had the ability to do anything to address these kinds of issues on either uh, campus, is there, is there, do you have a wish list? Do you, do you see anything that you'd really like to do that you haven't been able to do? Is it more patrol? Is it uh, more spending more time with uh, people to educate them about what the rules are? And, uh, just anything at all? I think what you've just said, as far as you know, um, broadening the uh, educational um, awareness, as far as on safety as well as uh, prevention, and then um, you know, increased patrols, and that's what we're trying to do. Great. Right. Okay. Thanks very much. Other members of the board at this time. Chair recognizes Trustee Archuleta. Did you have followed again by Trustee Zia? Thank you. Yes, uh, first of all, I just want to congratulate you on a very thorough report. I uh, was reading your report, but just uh, regarding the, um, the uh, sexual assault on campus, um, do we have a handbook or um, a brochure, something that we can give to students in the event that they uh, suffer or they experience a, a sexual assault on campus? Is yes. there something that we, I know it's very thorough and covered in the report that you prepared, but where could students go to receive that information? To um, obtain we have that it, information. We have it in our office and I believe um, Dr. Peterson could chime in on this as well for, out of his shop. Uh, we do have that information available to our student health services and our student life. We'll be doing a presentation at the next board meeting specifically on our Title IX response 
for sexual misconduct. So we can that, get more information then. That would be great. And I think it would also be ben really beneficial if as trustees we could receive also that information or that training. I think it's critical because of the new uh, laws, the new regulations. So thank you and congratulations on a very thorough report. Chair sure recognizes Trustee Zia. Um, sorry, I forgot to ask um, about the parking uh, uh, citations. Do is that a set uh, citation amount per the police department, or how does that value get um, set? Uh, I've heard from students and others that it's pretty steep and it's pretty burdensome on our students. Um, it's set by the city of Long Beach. Okay, so there's no way we can get relief for our students. Um, because they're students. <laughs> um, no, but they can contest the citation. Okay, so they'll have to go to the police department. No, uh, it's all electronic now where they can just go to the internet site and basically say, hey, my parking pass fell off the rear view mirror or I forgot to put it in my car because my car is in the shop. I use someone else's. So, I mean, they have the opportunity to contest it. And if w we wanted to change the value of the citations, does that have to go through a formal process through the city? <coughs> Correct, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Chair recognizes Vice President Otto. Yeah, it, it's not a question, it's a comment. Well, maybe it is a question. Uh, I know that very recently that the, in, throughout the state of California, they have changed the procedures whereby people that were ticketed uh, for vehicle offenses are now not being required to pay up front the fines before if they're going to contest them. I assume that's the same thing, that, that rule's the same in Long Beach? Yes. Okay. Very good. Other questions, members of the board? This is an informational item only, so there's no vote required. There's no other questions at the time. Thank you very much. Did you want to introduce a special guest who is sitting here? Yes, this is Deputy Chief Mike Beckman. He's my boss. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. All right, there's no other questions at this time. I'm sorry. Yes, Emory Gable, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I just wanted to um, publicly thank uh, Margie Padrone, who's our Director of Business Support Services, and Brendan Hayes, who's our Manager of Environmental Health and Safety Services. They both work very closely with Lieutenant Pryor and are you know, partially responsible for the presentation that, that Julie did tonight, although Julie did a fantastic job. Um, and so it's under their guidance that we have stepped up the patrols and we are doing um, a lot of the trainings. You know, We're trying to get out there on flex day, if we can get a session on flex day or any orientations that we do. Um, so it's under their guidance. And, and I think the efforts are paying off. If you looked at the, you know, the trend, the 10 year trend, this is the lowest number of crime that we've had in 10 years. Um, so I think that's something to be commended for. So thank you. Good. I'm sorry, Trustee Zia, do you have a question, comment? Um, I just wanted to also um, commend you, Lieutenant Pryor, um, especially since your boss is here too, and, and let him know that you're doing a fantastic job. And then just you know, wanted to see if we will be exploring programs like why did you stop me um, that the city um, has? Um, it's to bridge uh, the uh, relationship between police officers and um, community members um, and really um, build some relationships there. It would be, it's a, I believe it's a nonprofit entity, but it, it would be nice to see if we've explored that at some point in the future. Thank that you. Would be great. Very good. There's no other questions at the board. We thank you. Uh, the picture that you see up there, I, I look fondly over the fact that uh, many years ago, uh, the, the, the previous board uh, made a decision to contract out with the city of Long Beach for these uh, services. And uh, I've been very pleased with that decision ever since. And obviously the picture is of, a, uh, of the facility we have uh, for our public safety, which is a great improvement over the previous headquarters for the police here on the campus, which was a, um, I don't know what you want to call it. it. A trailer. Okay, yeah, I was always saying it was a circus trailer and they could just roll it down the street anytime and that's, <laughs> and so, uh, I'm, and that is part of our bond construction program as well. So thank you for the report and uh, good job. And if there's no other questions this time, we'll move on to the agenda. Thank you very much.
Next item is for the, um, it's 4.1, and it is the welcoming for a new student trustee. So the floor is yours, and welcome. So thank you. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because I'll be covering that during my uh, specific report. But um, for those who don't know me, my name is Alejandro Lomelli. I'm really excited to be a part of the uh, Board of Trustees here as a student representative. So uh, looking forward to a great year. Thanks. Thank you. And you do have a report. And we, uh, uh, it, it, we hope that uh, you have uh, as good success as Gus did previously. And uh, I know you're excited about it. And we're excited to have you here as well. So welcome. Next item is, this is the uh, reappointment to the Citizen Oversight Committee. This is an action item, and it is the, uh, that we are required to, and it's for the, the uh, to a, appoint three new members, or I'm sorry, three members to a second term. The following is John Gotts, who is the uh, support organization for the college, uh, Elaine McDaniel, that's a community at large position, and then David C., which is with the uh, Taxpayers Association of Lakewood Village Neighborhood Association. Those are the three members that we are we have for action item to reappoint to the Citizen Oversight Committee. So at that, I'll entertain a motion to approve these reappointments. So moved. Motion by Trustee Baxter. Second. Second by Trustee Zia. Are there any questions, comments on this item? I have a question. Chair recognizes Trustee Zia. Yes, I um, wanted to just, if someone can um, provide a overview of how many people we have and how many, uh, what each member's term is. Um, I understand they're, it seems like they're up for their um, second term, but if someone can um, provide it a um, overview of each member's term, I'd appreciate that. Vice well, President All Biden. the members on the committee, and not just the three that are up here. Yeah, yes, I, if, if we can, let I will ask um, Vice President Gable to be able to give us a, a framework for that, please. Vice President Gable. <coughs> Certainly, yes. The Citizens Oversight Committee has seven members, and it's specified within um, regulations on what each of those members uh, need to represent. And so one of the members is the associate student body president, so obviously the associate student body is the one that um, uh, nominate or, yeah, nominates and votes in that purpose, uh, that person. So the board never takes action on that position. So really, the board is appointing these six other members, and they have two-year terms. Those are alternating terms, so every year we have three uh, positions that would be up for renewal, and uh, within the regulations, uh, a member of a Citizens Oversight Committee is allowed to serve two consecutive two-year terms. So each of these individuals that are before you tonight have served one term, so they previously served from July 1st of 13 through June 30th of 15. Uh, they, have, they have all um, indicated that they are willing to serve a second term, and so that is what is uh, before you tonight. This would be their last term uh, for the period. Now, Citizens Oversight Committee members, they are able to sit out a year, and then they can come back on, um, but this would be the last term for these three individuals. Other questions? Members of the board? question. Um, so uh, how do the public um, compete for these positions? How do they find out? Um, and um, how do we notify them in case uh, members of the public are interested in serving? Um, historically, what we've done with the support organization for the college, I've contacted Dr. Jenny Baxter, and uh, she's given me names of who may be interested from the foundation perspective. And then the uh, rest of the individuals um, is really working with our communications department. We reach out to them and see if there's anybody who has expressed interest uh, throughout the time and, and kind of reach out to them. So it's a very informal process of, of how they have been selected in the past. Okay, I, I, would, I would recommend that we broaden our reach because um, not many people know that they have to show interest first um, and then get selected. It seems a little bit, um, you know, uh, different. Uh, 
if we could just be a little bit more open and outreach um, to a broader base, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Very good. Other questions? Uh, there is a motion on the floor. There's no other comments. Members of the board, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. And he is absent from the vote. And Sunny Zia. Aye. 4.2 uh, is approved. We're now to the consent calendar. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar in its entirety. Did I have a motion and a second? So moved. Motion Look. by Trustee Archuleta. Um, I have an item I want to pull. I want to pull it. I need the motion first on this. Second. Time. Second by Trustee Zia to approve the consent calendar. There's been a request on to pull. Uh, Trustee Zia has requested item 5.4 to be pulled for further discussion. Are there any other items at this time by members of the board? If not, then uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. Madam Secretary, could you please call the roll on approving the consent calendar with the exception of item 5.4? Irma Archuleta? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. And Sunny Zia? Aye. Very good. The consent calendar is approved. Item 5.4, it is on... Um, it's on the purchase order ratification. Before we have discussion, it's an action item. Could I entertain a motion to approve item 5.4? So moved. And there's a motion by Trustee second. Zia. Second by? Trustee Archuleta. Trustee Archuleta. Trustee Archuleta. Uh, the 5.4, there's a motion and a second. Discussion, chair recognizes Trustee Zia. Yes, thank you, President Kellogg. Um, I had uh, sent in my questions earlier in the day and um, I would uh, just suggest that we have the response of our staff um, that has been provided to us um, for our benefit to be also provided in the minutes for the public's benefit. And then I'll just ask a couple of questions there. So um, I don't know if I have to make a motion there in order to make it into the minutes or is that something that could be just added to the minutes? Uh I will say that because our minutes are not verbatim and I don't have the answer to that directly, but uh, I believe the answer is no, but uh, I always turn to our secretary on, this gets back to the fundamental question of how we handle our minutes. And I believe, I believe the answer is no, but I don't hold on hold it to me right here. But when you, uh, this, this gets back to that fundamental question about with our minutes and tradition, our minutes have never been verbatim. They have not been, we add things in, especially individual board members. So that's where I believe the answer is no. Um, I'm going to have to actually get back to you directly on that, but that's what I believe the, the ruling is. Well, since so, the answers have been... Rep uh, I'm sorry, but is that your question regarding this item? Is to well, that's one, if, if we can't add it to the minutes, then I'll ask each and every question that I have, which was going to take a, a little while. Right. So I'm just trying to make it easier on the um, board um, no, it's, and less two painful. Different things. Mm -hmm. That's two different things. You were asking about can your questions be put into the minutes, and I said I believe the answer is no. Um, but the other one is questions you have. Uh, the, you, the floor is yours. Yeah, I have, I've provided the questions earlier in the day and the responses have been given before the board meeting. So all I'm asking is that the Q&A be put, put in the minutes rather than asking each qu a question for the ease of the meeting. I, again, we're now to the question about the minutes and I've told you what I believe it is uh, and, and I don't know for sure. So you have questions, I'm sorry, Trustee Otto? Yeah, here's my concern about it. Um, if we're doing things not in the public, mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you ask questions about things that I don't have copies of, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about them, and then they're incorporated into the minutes as the answers to those questions that I don't have any opportunity to ask any questions about, then I don't think that it's very transparent, I don't think it's very open, mm -hmm. and in fact, it's kind of like doing the public's business off the dais, and it shouldn't happen that way. I know that uh, the best way to do it, I think, is to um, get the questions in in a, in a way that, uh, that if you are satisfied by the answers, you can eliminate some of the questions, or one could eliminate some of the questions, and then uh, the real important questions are the questions that there are no satisfactory answers to, then um, those can get asked at the meeting. But uh, otherwise, I think what we do is we're keeping the public from understanding what's going on up here. 
Well, I um, appreciate your your point of view, uh, Trustee Otto, but I would have to respectfully disagree because how would the public know what questions I asked if I don't ask them publicly and if they're not going to be included in the minutes? I'm, so I'm, um, with that, I'm going to ask every question that I had. Before you get to that point, though, I'm going to recognize Trustee Archuleta and then the floor back to uh, Trustee Zia. Again, I was going to say this is on item 5.4, the purchase order ratifications. It's not over minutes and that issue. That's a separate issue. But I'll recognize Trustee Archuleta and I'll come back and recognize Trustee Zia. Trustee Archuleta. Thank you, President Kellogg. Yes, I, um, I too agree with uh, Trustee Otto that we're not aware of what those questions are. And if this is a board matter, then we should have knowledge of what those questions are ahead of time. Uh, and at this point, um, we have not given you receive the questions and the answers before this meeting. So you have that in your pos possession. You may have not had an opportunity to review it, but nevertheless, I want to get into my questions and ask uh, or all before the questions. we do. Wait a minute, I, sorry, I well, don't think I have them. What time were they sent? I, okay. I don't have them. Others are saying they, they were don't have sent either. by um, Anne Marie right. before the meeting. We are, we are discussing what, what time before the meeting? It was sent. I don't know, Anne Marie, you might want to speak to this. It was sent on, it was an hour ago. An hour ago? And we were yep. in closed session an hour ago. Yeah, but it was before the meeting. So nevertheless, I'm, I'm just going to get to, to my question. Before, Trustee Archuleta, did you? Well, I, I think that we move? should agree as the board. We need to agree that this is something that we want to discuss before the, before the public. I, I think that reasonable time is... It does not an uh, hour before the meeting. Okay, yeah, I agree with you. So I'm going to ask my questions so that everybody has the opportunity to hear my questions. Um, if so Since you haven't had a chance to review them, I'm happy to answer, ask uh, my questions. Trustee Archuleta, have you yielded the floor? And if this, I will recognize then Trustee Zia. Uh, and again, the motion is to approve item 5.2, approval of, uh, of the um, 5.4, the purchase order ratifications. The chair recognizes Trustee Zia. Okay, great, thank you. So item um, 73905 for the parking lot repairs. Um, if you could please uh, provide, um, and this is with the allied um, paving. Um, uh, what was the, um, why, were, why are we going with a direct procurement and um, was it a uh, low bid process that we po followed? How many bids did we receive? And um, is it more cost conducive to do it with a direct purchase versus um, a uh, change order if there is a contract there that exists? Um, so we could do, I could go each and every one of them, um, Anne Marie, if you want, or um, I can stop and wait for a response, whatever you're preferences. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, reply on the allied paving. So the allied paving, this um, was actually a change order for 36219 The original purchase order was issued on September 2nd of 2014. And this is um, an open order that we have with allied paving to come out throughout the year as needed to fix potholes in the parking lot, to do restriping, to um, do coding and you know various things that we need within the parking lot when we move and change the designation of stalls from student to staff we use allied paving so this was additional work that we called them out to do that was needed in that stadium as well as uh, the O building parking lots okay so this is a change order to which contract it was a it was an open purchase order that we do with Allied Paving. This is for services, and so it's not something that's required to be bid. So every year we issue an open purchase order with Allied Paving at the beginning of the year that we hope will cover the maintenance of the parking lots throughout the year. Um, in this instance, we needed to do a little bit extra work at Vet Stadium uh, because we had just uh, repaved that and we needed to add additional handicap stalls in order to comply with the accessibility guidelines and we made changes to the O building lots. 
Okay, so um, the selection of the Ally Paving contractor, was that um, a competitive process that we followed? So how did we select this open pur purchase order contractor? We get proposals and then they, they select the one that we think will best be able to come out when the repairs are needed. This isn't something that's required to be bid and so we do not bid this at the beginning of the year. Okay, but it's, it sounds like we did get competitive proposals or didn't you just mention that? We get quotes. I wouldn't say they're competitive proposals. They'll, they'll work with quotes. And is it the lowest uh, price? Were they the lowest cost well, provider? We're doing it as an open purchase order. So when we're doing it as an open purchase order, you don't have a lowest price. You're just working with the vendor um, that will be able to meet the district's guidelines and that sort of thing. Okay, I see. And then um, I see on 75032, this is the upgrading of the fire suppression system, Costco. Um, same, same question, what, what uh, competitive process did we follow? And um, if we're upgrading, um, it, was this something that was missed when, during the design process? Is it a code enforcement issue that we're going to have to upgrade to because we, have a, um, we had someone um, come and give us a code enforcement? Um, citation of some sort, or is it just because we w chose to upgrade? No, we did not have a code enforcement citation. Um, and yes, it is something that we do um, as time wears on, the fire suppression systems need to be upgraded. This particular one was for the hoods uh, within the food service area for building E, as well as some data rooms throughout the campus. This um, was not bid, it was below the bid, bid limit, and so they uh, worked with this company. This is one of the companies that we work with uh, quite frequently on our fire suppression system, and so that was why uh, we went with them. Uh, when you say below the bid um, amount, what is that amount? $15,000. So anything under 15000 doesn't need to be bid? If it's a public works project. So this would be considered a public works project. And uh, since it was under 15000 it was not required to be bid. Um, you know, the bidding limits vary if it is um, for equipment. You know, equipment bidding limit is around $84,000. But then we also follow CUPCA. Um, guidelines, and so our bidding limits vary based upon the CUPCA guidelines. So, uh, technically, we just sole source the, uh, with these folks. So we can f technically go ahead and select whoever we want without bidding them, bidding the pr uh, process. Yes, we can contract out with them and issue a purchase order to them. I wouldn't say we sole source. That has a completely different legal connotation. Um, so this was not a sole source, but this was a vendor that we selected to have the work done for us. And how do we select them? It was a recommendation from our um, facilities department. And how do they recommend it? <laughs> they work with the company. Hmm. So it sounds like it was relationship-based. Um, Sun Environmental Services um, for hazardous waste removal. So what exactly is the hazardous waste that we're removing and um, wh why was it there and uh, is it something that was unforeseen um, and then we're going to directly contracting with the specialty contractor? Yes, this is another vendor that we did do um, an RFP on that we have on call for any hazardous waste removal that we have. Uh, this particular instance was cleaning out buildings PP, QQ, and RR over at the PCC campus. So since the uh, auto body program and the diesel program are no longer offering classes in there, we were able to completely clean out those buildings in preparation for the upcoming construction that will be ongoing. It included uh, paint removal, chemical removal, solvent removal, um, you know, all types of things that are considered hazardous waste that we can't just pick up and throw away. Okay, great. And, um, and they were, how were they selected? 
as I said, this was a vendor that we do an RFP process on, and uh, Sun Environmental is one of the ones that uh, appears on the list that allows us to uh, work with. 